This choir for the wonderful music. Song, songs of understanding, not just music, but because you know the book say, speak with understanding, pray with understanding, and sing with understanding. You really pay attention to the lyrics in these songs that we say. Uh, that the, uh, I should say the choir sing, not we. <laughs> they are all songs of understanding, and that is how it's supposed to be done. I want to welcome everybody here to the house of Jacob. Today, everybody is here and everybody that's uh, joining us by our live stream and by our conference call, I want to say welcome to them as well. And as always, it's good to have you uh, fellowshipping with us today. And we are gathered here to do what we do every Sabbath, and that is to stand up and read. You know, if you read your Bible, you know... Uh, Books say that's what Jesus did on the Sabbath day. He stood up as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. Because you need to do that so that you might get some understanding of the Word of God, people. Because that is something that is seriously lacking. But that's what you need. Because until you get that, you don't even know how to serve God. You know, like Jesus said uh, to them Jews, you worship and you don't know what you worship. And that can truly be said for this generation. They worship and they don't know what they worship. They just worshiping something. Following some traditions that's been passed on to them without doing any research to making certain that what they're being taught is right. Because as I always say, you have to get this right. You know, God gave specific instructions as to what he wanted his servants to do. And unless you follow those instructions, you are not being a servant. I don't care what you think. You must follow those instructions. That's what a servant is. A servant is one that follows the master's instructions. And that's, by the way, why we're gathered here today yes, on a Saturday as opposed to a Sunday, as most people do, because the Lord commanded in his word that you have a holy convocation on the seventh day. And everything we have tell us that Saturday is the seventh day, everything we have. Because people try to put up some kind of little argument sometimes. We don't know what day the Sabbath day is. Yes, you do. Because some of those very same people, they are the one that call themselves commemorating the resurrection of Jesus on a Sunday. So if you know when the first day is, then you know when the seventh one is, right? It's the day before, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but it was done in every generation, because the Lord said it was to be done in every generation. Even in the New Testament, it did not matter. Even after Jesus died, it did not matter. It was still the seventh day. And it will be the seventh day throughout all generations. Now, we are going to... Uh, Deal with the lesson here, I tell Every man shall be rewarded according to his works. Which works mean deeds or acts. And every man will be rewarded according to his deeds or acts. Because that's what's going to determine your fate, people whether or not you do the good works that the Lord requires. Because people say you don't have to do any works. You're saved by grace. Yeah, you are saved by grace. They don't understand that. They do that to try and get around work, saying that you, you, know, you don't have nothing to do. Well, we're going we gonna to read a little bit about this saved by grace. But you got some works to do. 
because if you don't have any works to do, how is he going to reward you or judge you according to your works if you ain't got nothing to do? That's what the book said. We're going to read some of that. Lord, see, so he's going to judge every man according to his works. He's going to reward every man according to his works. So you ain't got no works to do, then how are you going to reward you? Just make a little common sense. You know, we're going to... Uh, we're going we're gonna to start this lesson out. I'm going to deal just uh, touch on this grace a little bit. Because you are saved by grace, but that doesn't cancel out the, the law. And he said, well, all you got to do is just believe. Well, the book said faith without works is dead. Amen. That's, all, that's, that's what uh, uh, belief is. Belief is just faith. And he said faith without works is dead. You sh In fact, it goes on to say, you show your faith by your works. Let's go, and, uh, let's go read something here in Ephesians. We're going to start reading in Ephesians chapter 2. And we want to begin reading at, uh, at verse 1. Because we're going to just read this and we're going to see what it says here. Because they tell you, you know, they like to read this. Because they say you're saved by grace, meaning you don't have to do any works. But well, we're going to read it all here. Start reading that verse 1. Go ahead and read. And you have he quickened, uh -huh. who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now he said you have he quickened, meaning in other words, you have made a lie. That's what quickened mean to make a lie. Because everybody was dead in trespasses and in sins. And they were dead until Jesus came and died for of their trespasses and their sins. Go ahead and read. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, uh -huh. according to the prince of the power of the air. Go ahead. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Go ahead and read. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. See what they said now? He said we all walked according uh, uh, to the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all have had our conversation, meaning our lifestyle in times past. Go ahead and read. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Go ahead. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. See what he says here, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Go ahead, continue to read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, uh -huh. even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. Go ahead. By grace ye are saved. So this means exactly what it said. By grace you are saved. Just told you everybody was in sin. But he said, you know, Jesus gave us access to life. I'll put it that way. But everybody was dead in sins. He said, by grace you are saved. Go ahead, continue to read. And hath raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. That in, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. In Notice his, what it said, in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Go ahead. In his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. For by grace are ye saved through faith, uh -huh. and, that, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So now he says, by grace you are saved through faith. Through faith in what? Through faith in Jesus. By grace, it, and it means just what it says, but does not cancel our works. And he's going to tell you that right here. All we have to do, just keep reading. Go ahead and read on, brother. Not of works. Uh, he said, not of works. It's not by works. You are not saved by works. You cannot earn your salvation. That was a free gift. You know how salvation came in the first place? It came because Jesus came and died for our sin. You didn't earn that. You didn't work for that. You can't do enough work to get that. That's right. But you do have to do some works in order to retain it. Yes, Go sir. ahead and read. Lest any man should boast. So he said, now he said, not by works, least any man should boast. So he just letting you know you're not saved by works, you're saved by grace. And he said, ain't no need of your boasting. Not by works, least any man should boast. Go ahead and read on. For we are his workmanship. Go ahead. We said we are his workmanship. Go ahead. For what? Go ahead and read. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See what they said? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you got to do works. 
but they got to be good works. That's what he's going to judge you by. That's what he's going to reward you by, your works, by your deeds, by your acts. That's what works is. And they are good works, and they are evil works. But he said we are created unto good works. Go ahead, read on. Which God hath before ordained uh -huh. that we should walk in them. Look what he said, that God hath before ordained that we should walk in. So he got some works to do. Yes, sir. But they got to be good works. That's right. Because the Lord hath ordained that you should walk in them. So, yeah, Jesus saved us. That's by grace. He came and died for your sin. You didn't earn that. But if you're a good salvation, you got to do good works that God has foreordained. You know what the good works that he foreordained? It is walking in his word. That is the good works that he has foreordained. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to Titus chapter 2. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 11. Titus 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 11. See, this grace, it doesn't cancel out the law, people. That's what they have tried to make it do. They have tried to make it cancel out the law. You know, you tell people you got to keep the law, you got to do some work. They say, no, we're saved by grace, and yes, you are. But the people that say that, they don't understand what grace is. They're thinking that grace is something that you can do in order to get around God's law. But no, it just shows you in good works that God have foreordained that we should walk in them. Start reading at Titus chapter 2 and began at verse 11, 2 and 11. Go ahead and read it. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. See what it say? It has appeared unto all men because when the Lord came, he died for everybody. However, everybody won't get salvation because everybody won't do what is necessary in order to get salvation. And what is necessary? Those good works that we just read about over in Ephesians. Go ahead and read on. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and uh -huh. worldly lusts, Go ahead. we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. See what it said? Teaching us that we should deny ungodly works. Teaching us that we should live soberly. If soberly, that means righteously. Go ahead, read on. Looking for that blessed hope uh -huh. and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on the glorious appearing of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're waiting on, and that's when you're going to get your full reward at that time. Go ahead, read on. Who gave himself for us. That's what he did. He gave himself for us. Read. That he might redeem us from all iniquity uh -huh. and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. See what I said? Here we got them good works that he might, as it says here, that he might redeem us from iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people that is zealous of good works. So he got works to do, but they got to be good works. Your works ain't going to save you. But in order to get salvation, you've got to do works. The blood of Jesus is what saves you. But you've got to do good works, as we just read here. Now, let's go over to, uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 22, and we'll pick it up at verse 12. Revelation 22. And we are going to begin reading at verse 12. So, oh Lord, going to let you know here that he's going to judge every man according to his works. And I'll say it again, if he's going to do that, that means you've got to do some works. If he's going to judge you according to your works. Start reading at Revelation 22 and began reading at verse 12. 22 and 12. Go ahead and read. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Go ahead. To give every man according as his works shall be. Well, what is this then? If you ain't got no works to do. It said, I come quickly, and I'm going to give every man according as his works shall be. That means that you got some works to do. Go ahead. Continue reading. I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the beginning and the end. Go ahead. The first and the last. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Well, those are the works that you have to do. 
He said, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. Adam took it away, but Jesus came and got it, gave it back. But in order for you to have your right to the tree of life, he's telling you right here that you got to do them commandments. Blessed are those that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. Let's go over to, uh, 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 to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading at verse 7. Genesis 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 7. So now you want your right back to the tree of life, then you got to do the commandments. Those are the works that you have to do, people. We're going to start reading here in uh, Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Go ahead. And man became a living soul. Now, this is Adam that we are reading about here. Go ahead and read on. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, uh -huh. and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight uh -huh. and good for food. Now, he said he made him out, out of the ground. He made all these trees to go, uh, to grow. Those that look good and those that's good for food. But now he's going to deal with two symbolic trees here. And that is the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go ahead, continue to read. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Go ahead. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, these trees, they are symbolic. One represents the teaching of Satan and the other one represents the Lord here. And if you want a life, you can only get it through the Lord. So now, he said, uh, uh, he made the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Skip down to verse 15. This is what the Lord said here. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh -huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So the Lord gave man a choice here. You know, you can either... Eat of the tree of life and live forever, or you can eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you can die. So it's a, everybody had that choice, even to this very day. Lord started this thing out giving man that choice. And he ended it up giving man that same choice. As we read in Revelation chapter 22, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. But everybody got that option. You, you can do right and get eternal life, or you can do wrong, and you're going to die. It has always been that way. Every man has always had that option from the very first time the Lord said man on this earth. Let's go over to uh, 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 Genesis chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. I don't get it how you think you're going to get everlasting life, and you don't have to do nothing except open your mouth and say, I believe. Everlasting life now. You got to do some work yes, to sir. get anything. That's right. But you think you're going to get everlasting life and you ain't going to have to do no works. Lord, keep telling you, you're going to reward every man according to his work. And as we just read here in this second chapter of Genesis, Lord lets you know, you got to eat of the tree of life if you want to live forever. Right. Even that tree of life means being obedient unto the commandments, people. That's what it means in plain, simple language. Start reading here at uh, chapter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because everybody want to lay it all on Satan. Well, Satan got his problem, and the Lord going to deal with him. But man got his as well, and the Lord going to deal with him. Yes, Go sir. ahead and continue. Start reading that verse one, go ahead and read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Well, the serpent, that ain't none other than the devil, which is an archangel. We ain't talking about no snake slithering around on the ground. We're talking about the devil. Now, he said he was more crafty and cunning than any beast that the Lord God had made. Go ahead and read on. And he said unto the woman, Yea. Have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Go ahead and read. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, uh -huh. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Well, that lets you know they understood. Yes, sir. 
you know, so there wasn't no ignorance involved. Well, right. you know, I, I don't know. Well, he, the woman a, a acknowledged that God had told them, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because if you eat thereof, then that is the day that you are going to die. Go ahead, continue to read. And the serpent said unto the woman, uh -huh. ye shall not surely die. Well, this is how Satan operates. You know, he gave you some truth, and then he turned around, he gave you a lie as well. Well, the Lord then said, if you eat of it, that's the day you're going to die. What did Satan say? You shall not surely die. So now you either had the option of doing what the Lord said do or doing what Satan said do. That was this tree of the knowledge of good and evil that we read about. You ain't talking about some tree out there in the field somewhere you go and grab some off of and, and take it and start chewing on it. Because you don't get knowledge by eating some food that's hanging off a tree. That's right, brother. You get knowledge by information. Yes, sir. You don't either read something or somebody done told you something. And that's what Adam and Eve did. Really, really it was Eve. Eve listened to the serpent and Adam listened to her. When the Lord done told him what to do. That's right. Instead of doing what the serpent told your wife, he was supposed to do what God told him. That's right. But rather he chose to obey his wife as opposed to obeying God and he got him killed. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Read it. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, uh -huh. and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Go ahead and read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, Go ahead. she took up the fruit thereof, and did eat, uh -huh. and gave also unto her husband with her, Go and ahead. he did eat. Read. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Apparently they didn't know nothing before. No, sir. And when God was ready, he would have informed them That's right. of anything that they needed to know. But she saw that the tree was good for food and one that would make one wise. She took of it and she ate. Then she turned around and gave it to her and he ate. So now both of them, they have eaten up the tree yes, that sir. God said don't eat of because if you eat of it, then that is the day that you are going to die. Go ahead, continue to read. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Go ahead. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Go ahead. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Go ahead. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Wait a minute, you've been listening to somebody. Yes, That's how you get knowledge, people. You listen to something. He said, now who told you that you were naked? You've been talking to somebody. And I told you not to. So now who told you that you were naked? Go ahead, continue to read. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Go ahead and read. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the well, Lord, well, he really, he didn't lie. I mean, you know, he, <laughs> he laid it on her. <laughs> he didn't lie, really. It was her that gave it to yes, him. Yes, sir. But he wasn't supposed to eat of That's it. That's right. He was supposed to do what God told him that he should do. So he was in fault. You, he was in fault because he listened to his wife right. rather than listening to God. Yes, sir. But he's going to lay it all on her. That woman you gave me, she gave it to me, and I ate it. <laughs> so if it was his fault, why is he going to punish Adam then? That's right. He's going to punish both of them. He's going to even get saved for lying too. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Continue to read. Verse 13. Read it. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? Uh -huh. done? <coughs> Excuse me. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Go ahead. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, uh -huh. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Uh -huh. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt, shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Well, you know, uh, the, one, uh, the serpent did beguile her. But now the Lord, he going to deal with the serpent for what he did. 
but he's going to deal with the woman and with the man because of what they did. So you know this stuff about say it's Satan's fault, huh? Why is he gonna punish them then if it's all Satan's That's fault? That's right. What Satan did, he gonna answer for that, and what they did, they gonna answer for that. That's right. Go ahead, continue read. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed. Go ahead, read. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What do you mean, say, in between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed? And, and, and the woman's seed going to bruise thy head. That's what, you know what uh, bruising his head means? That means when the Lord put him in the lake of fire. And he said, he shall bruise thy heel. In other words, Jesus is going to be crucified, but he would raise again from the dead in three days. But now, so everybody going to pay for their own, yes, in sir. other words. The woman going to pay for hers, the man going to pay for his, and Satan going to pay for his. Go ahead, continue to read. Unto the woman, he said, uh -huh. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Go ahead. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Go ahead and read. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Go ahead. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Go ahead, read. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. Uh -huh. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So now everybody's going to get punished for what they did. Yes, sir. And that's how it should be. That's fair, isn't it? Yes, sir. Why should one get punished for something that somebody else did? That's right. Lord started this thing out being fair. Everybody will be punished for what they did. Let's go now to uh, go now to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. The Lord have always given man a choice. So if you find yourself somewhere that you don't want to be, it was by your choice That's right. that you're there. Because you did what you shouldn't have done, and now you're going to pay the cost for it. That's just how it is, people. Lord, of all ways, Lord even told Cain, if you do well, you shall be accepted. But if not, then sin lies at the door. Lord, I've always given you a choice. If you wind up in the fire, it's because you made that choice. That's right. You did not do what you were supposed to do. Let's start reading here at Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we'll pick it up at verse 11. Here, I'm going to show you what the Lord said uh, to the nation of Israel. He'll start reading at uh, verse 11. Go ahead and read. For this commandment which I command thee this day, uh -huh. it is not hidden from thee, Go ahead. neither is it far off. See what he says? He's saying this by the mouth of Moses. It ain't hid, and neither is it far off. That you got to send somebody to go get somewhere and get it. It's right there. Now you go ahead, continue to read. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Go ahead, read. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? So now you ain't got to send nobody up to heaven to get it. They hear it and do it. You ain't got to send nobody way overseas to get it that you might hear it and do it. It is nigh unto thee. Go ahead, continue to read. But the word is very nigh unto thee. Go ahead. In thy mouth and in thy heart go that ahead. thou mayest do it. Read it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Well, Lord, that means you got, they got a choice, don't yes, they? He said life and good and death and evil. I've set this before. This is what he's saying to all of the people. And it applies to everybody. I know he's dealing with Israel here, but everybody has the same option. Man, there's always what you think the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was. Go ahead, continue to read. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments well, and his I statutes. I command you this day to love the Lord your God, 
to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. Go ahead and read on. And his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Go ahead and read. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, uh -huh. I denounce unto you this day Go ahead. that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. See what the Lord said to the people. He said, now if your heart turn away so that you will not hear and be drawn away to worship other gods, you're going to perish. Go ahead, continue to read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, uh -huh. that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Go ahead. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Well, he gave you an option, didn't he? Yes, sir. But then he turned around and he told you which option you should take. That's right. Therefore choose life, he says, that you may live. How do you do that? Well, he even told you that as well. By doing his commandments and statutes and judgments. That's how you choose life. That's what the commandments are about, people. They are for life. Yes, you know, sir. Jesus even said that himself. When the man asked him, what must I do to have eternal life? You know what Jesus told him to do? Keep, Keep the, the commandments. commandments. So it's always been about being obedient to God that you could get life. Always been that way, people. Let's go over to uh, Hosea chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading at uh, verse 1, Hosea chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And I'm going to just show you what Israel did. Hosea 4, we began reading at verse 1, because the Lord has set before man this option. And everybody has always heard this option. All of the Nation of Israel knew about it. But I'm going to show you what they did. We're going to start reading at Hosea chapter 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hosea 4, we'll pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead and read it, brother. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. See what the Lord said? He said, now you hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Go ahead and read on. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, uh -huh. because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. See what he said, the Lord, he said, the Lord got a controversy. He said, because there is no truth, nor knowledge, or mercy in the land. Go ahead and read on. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, uh -huh. they break out, and blood toucheth blood. In other words, all the things that God said don't do, he said those are the things that Israel was doing. Go ahead, read on. Therefore shall the land mourn, uh -huh. and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish Go ahead, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Uh -huh. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Go ahead, read. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Go ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh -huh. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. See what the Lord says, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But look at what he said, they have rejected knowledge. The knowledge was there apparently, yes, sir. but they have rejected it. And they're still rejecting it even until this very day. All you got to do is just pull up a Bible and start reading and watch them reject it. They rejected it in that generation, and they're still doing it to this day. And the Lord said they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, the Lord said, I'm going to reject you as well. Go ahead, read on. End of 6. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Wait a minute. See what the Lord said? You have forgotten the law of your God. Therefore, the Lord said, I will Forget thy children also. Go ahead, read. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Go ahead. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. Uh -huh. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. Go ahead. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. The Lord say, you know, because of what they have done, I'm going to punish them for their ways 
and I'm going to reward them for their doing. So it's on them then, isn't it? They knew what it was they were supposed to do and what they weren't supposed to do. And the Lord said, I'm going to punish them for their doing. Because they knew better. When you know better, the punishment is worse, people. Yes, sir. We're going to read that a little bit later. Let's go now to uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20. So, Lord, I'm going to just let you know, every man will be rewarded according to their works. Not according to what somebody else did. That's right. What you did, the Lord ain't going to punish me for it. And what I did, the Lord ain't going to punish you for it. He's going to punish every man according to their works. And that is fair. And that is what the Lord had Ezekiel to say to the people here in this uh, 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 18th chapter of Ezekiel. Start reading at verse 20. Go ahead and read it. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. See what the Lord said, the soul that sinneth, that is the soul that will die, the one that sinned. Everybody going to pay for their own sins, and that is what the Lord is saying, having Ezekiel to say to the people. Go ahead and read on. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Well, Lord said, the son ain't going to bear the iniquity of the father, and neither is the father going to bear the iniquity of the son. Everybody is going to bear their own sin. That is fair. And that's what the Lord is going to make known here in this 18th chapter of Ezekiel. Go ahead and read it. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, Go ahead. and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So you're going to be rewarded for your righteousness, and you're going to be punished for your wickedness. Yes, sir. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon him. Go ahead, continue to read. But if the wicked will turn from all his sin that he have committed uh -huh. and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, Go ahead. he shall surely live, he shall not die. That's all the Lord wants the wicked to do. To turn from his wickedness and keep all of the Lord's statutes and all of his judgments. He shall not die, he shall live. Isn't that fair? See, the Lord is a fair God. Yes, sir. So all he's asking the wicked to do is just turn from their wickedness. God don't want anybody to die. What he wants is everybody to turn from their wickedness. So if they turn from their wickedness, then they will live. That's right. That is good, isn't it? It's good. So all the Lord is asking you to do. He ain't saying because you're not wicked that I'm going to kill you. What he's saying, if you turn from your wickedness, then you shall live. Go ahead, continue reading. All his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. All he got to do is just turn from his wickedness. And the Lord said, all them transgressions that he have done, they will not be mentioned. In his righteousness, he shall live. Just turn from all those trans. The Lord is asking that you repent and turn away from all those transgressions, and you shall live. Go ahead, read on. Verse 23. Go ahead, read. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Lord, saith the Lord no God. Pre pleasure in the wicked that they shall die. What he wanted them to do is turn away from That's right. it. Right. No, the Lord ain't looking to take nobody out. He asking that you turn from your wickedness. That's all that he's asking that you might live. Go ahead, continue to read. And not that he should t return from his ways and live. Go ahead. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity uh -huh. and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, Go ahead. shall he live? All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. Uh -huh. And his trespass that he have trespassed and in his sin that he have sinned, in them shall he die. Well, now... He Here's the other side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that he don't walk righteous. And then he decided to turn away and walk in wickedness. Then all of that righteousness that he have done, it will not be remembered. In his wickedness, he shall die. Don't mean like, you know, you done did this one thing wrong, God will automatically take you out. But if you get entangled in it, 
and start to continue to walk in it. Then the Lord said, in all that wickedness, you're going to die. Yes, sir. But God said, he is just. This is right and this is fair. Go ahead, continue to read. Verse 25. Go ahead and read. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Uh-huh. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Uh -huh. Are not your ways unequal? Now, then, then the Lord said, you, know, you say, O house of Israel, the Lord's way is not equal. The Lord said, not my way equal, and ain't, no, ain't your ways unequal? And they are. Because I guarantee you, if it was up to you, you could turn away and do all kind of wickedness and still live. That wouldn't be fair. No, sir. Go ahead, read on. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness uh -huh. and committeth iniquity and dieth in them. See what it said? When he turned away from his righteousness and he committeth iniquity and he dieth in them. In other words, you know, he done did some wickedness and now he's been taken out. He didn't get, he didn't get around to repenting. He died in his wickedness. In other words, the Lord caught him in his wickedness. He going to die in his wickedness, and that is it. Go ahead, continue to read. For his iniquity that he have done shall he die. Mm -hmm. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he have committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, Go ahead. he shall save his soul alive. Go ahead and read. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgression that he have committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. See what I say? He considered. Thought about this thing. Let me, let me turn away from this wickedness that I might live. He considered and he turned away from all of that wickedness that he committed. Then the Lord said he shall surely live and not die. Go ahead, continue to read. Yet saith the house of Israel, uh -huh. the way of the Lord is not equal. Go ahead. O house of Israel. Are not my ways equal? Uh -huh. Are not your ways unequal? Go ahead. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. See what it says? I'm going to judge you, everyone according to his way. You know, we didn't read all of, this, all of this chapter here. But the Lord was saying earlier, which we didn't bother to read, that the son ain't going to die for the father, and the father ain't going to die for the son, Every man going to die for their own iniquity. Yes, sir. Therefore, the Lord said, turn away from your wickedness that you might live because I'm going to judge every man according to his works. So if he's going to judge according to your works, that means your works got to do. You got to do some work. Yes, and right. he's telling you what they are right here. He said, turn from your wickedness and do them commandments that you might live. That all, those are the works that you have to do, people. All this stuff about you ain't got no works to do. And all this stuff about you ain't got to do no commandments. Well, what is the Lord talking about here then? That's right. When he tell you to turn from your wickedness and walk in these commandments that you might live. What verse are we? Uh, end of 30. Go ahead and read. Repent and turn yourselves from your transgressions. See what the Lord said, repent. And turn yourselves from your transgression. Go ahead and read on. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Go ahead and read. Cast away from you all your transgressions, uh -huh. whereby ye have transgressed. Go ahead. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. Uh -huh. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Go ahead and read. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. See what the Lord said, I ain't got no pleasure in the death of him that died. Lord don't want any to perish. But he want everybody to come to repent. Yes, he ain't got no pleasure in, in, in killing you. He wants you to live. That's what he sent his son for, to die so that you might live. Yes, sir. So he ain't got no pleasure in killing you. All he's saying, turn from your wickedness that you might live. Go ahead, finish that verse. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. He said, wherefore, turn yourselves and live. Now, let's go over to uh, Romans chapter 2, and I'm going to show you. This is not just for Israel. Because you know you read Israel, that's for Israel. That ain't for us. That's for everybody. Whatever the Lord said for Israel, it's for everybody else too. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. And I'm going to show you it didn't change uh, when you got into the New Testament. And I'm going to show you it is for everybody. Whether you Jew, Gentile, does not matter. 
Where to get a Jew cut off or get a, a Gentile cut off? And where to get a Jew salvation or get a Gentile salvation? Let's start reading here at uh, Romans chapter 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 4. Romans 2, we'll begin reading at verse 4. Okay, go ahead and read. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Go ahead. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? No, what it says here, despisest thou his riches and goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Go ahead, long suffering. Go ahead and read. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So now, you know, he told you uh, that you need to repent and turn to him. But however, he said thy unrepentant heart, that's what mean impenitent heart means, unrepentant heart. Therefore, then you're going to treasure up yourself wrath against the day of wrath. Go ahead and read on. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. He going to render to every man according to his deeds. He ain't, he ain't dealing here with just Israel. Right. He's dealing with everybody. Whether you Israel, Gentile, does not matter. And he's going to say it right here. Well, you know, he dealt with Israel. We read that in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. But now he's dealing with every man, and they say he will render to every man according to his deeds. Go ahead, continue reading. To them who by patience continue, to, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. See what it said, to them who by patience and continue in well-doing, then he said they got eternal life coming. But they making that choice. You understand what I'm saying? He said, because you're going to decide whether or not you are going to continue in well-doing. Yes, now, you're going to decide that. You decide it every day by your actions. Your actions, your deeds, your work. That's what is going to determine your fate. If you decide well-doing, then you got eternal life coming. But if you decide not well-doing, then you got that other option coming. Go ahead. He's going to tell you. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Read. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. See what it said? But unto those that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Go ahead and read on. But obey unrighteousness. But obey unrighteousness. Go ahead and read. Indignation and wrath. Indignation and wrath, he said, upon them. But they all had that choice, didn't they? You could obey the truth and get everlasting life, or you could obey contention, and, it, and then you will get indignation and wrath. Go ahead, continue reading. Tribulation and anguish. Go ahead, read. Upon every soul of man that do of evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. See what it says, upon every man that do of evil, on the Jew first and then on the Gentile. So as I was saying, Whatever get the Jew salvation, it'll get the Gentile salvation. Right. Whatever I get the Jew cut off, it'll get the Gentile yes, cut off. Go ahead, read on. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Glory and honor, peace to every man that works. So who, go, who, are, who are determining their own fate? You uh -huh. are. Yes, sir. All you got to do is work good, then you get everlasting life. But if you choose not to, if you choose not to repent, then you have indignation coming and wrath of God. You know what the wrath of God is? The ultimate wrath of God is the fire. Right. Yes, so sir. what verse are we? Verse 11. Go ahead and read. For there is no respect of persons with God. God ain't no respect of persons. You don't care nothing about you being a Jew. Jesus made it clear uh, to them Jews over in uh, uh, John chapter 8 when they want to tell him about their Abraham seed. He told them, I know you're Abraham seed, but you really are your father of the devil. Yes, sir. Because if you was Abraham seed, then you would do the works of Abraham. He showed them again in the wilderness when he killed them all there in the wilderness except for a couple. So it didn't matter about them being right, Jews brother. because the Lord is not a respecter of persons, people. The Lord see two things. He see righteousness and he see wickedness. That's all that he see. I understand about Israel. I know he chose Israel. I know he chose them to be priests. I understand that. But it doesn't matter that they were chosen to be priests. What matters is that they walk in righteousness. That's what matters. Because if they don't walk in righteousness 
as we read in Hosea. Lord said, you ain't going to be no priest under me. It's all about walking in righteousness. That is what it's about. You are determining your fate every day. What verse are we? End at 11. Go ahead and read. For as many as have sinned without law uh -huh. shall also perish without law. Go ahead. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Well, here you got the law again. And you're not only dealing with the Jews, but you're dealing with the Gentiles yes, as well. Now, I told you, you know, whatever the, the Old Testament said, New Testament said the same thing. And what applied to the Jews, it applied to the Gentiles as well. Go ahead, read on. For not the hearers of the law shall are just before God, uh -huh. but the doers of the law shall be justified. See what he says here, not the hearers, but the doers. Of, that let you know that whether you are a Jew or Gentile, you got to walk in the law. These are the good works that he's telling you you got to do. Even though Jesus came and died for you, you still got to do the good works. Yes, sir. It is by grace that you are saved, but you still got to do the good works. And the good works is walking in the law. That is what the good works is. If you ain't doing that, you ain't got no good works. That's right. Let's go look at this thing again here. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to James uh, 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 chapter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. James chapter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Every man going to pay for his own deeds. God is fair. That's what he was saying over in Ezekiel. He is fair. Yes, sir. If I got to pay for something that you did, that ain't fair. Or if you got to pay for something I did, that ain't no, fair. Sir. But God told you he's fair and he's just. That's why every man going to pay for his own deeds. He's going to reward every man according to his own works. You can't get me cut off, and I can't get you cut off. Right. That's fair. Ain't that fair? That's fair. Let's start reading at James chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. James 1, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 12. You know, the Lord even said, uh, I, I believe it's in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 14. Lord said, if he sent a sword on the land, and you have these three righteous men in the land, Noah, Daniel, and Job, he said they can only save themselves. That's right. They can't save wife or children or nothing. That's right. They can only save themselves. That's how it should be. You're going to either save yourself or you're going to get yourself cut off, one or the other. So you ain't got nobody to blame. So everybody looking for somebody to lay the blame on. That's why they always want to throw it all on Satan. Well, that's why I read you what I read you in Genesis chapter 3. Lord going to do what he's going to do to Satan, but he's going to do what he's going to do to the woman and do what he's going to do to the man as well. Because everybody was guilty. Yes, sir. And everybody had to pay for what they did. Show you something here. James chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 12. James 1, and begin reading at verse 12. 1 and 12. Okay, go ahead and read. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, uh -huh. for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So now, uh, you, the temptation going to come. That's coming to everybody. But he said, blessed is the man that endureth the temptation. But when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. That's if you don't give in to the temptation. He said, when you're tried, you will receive a crown of life. Go ahead and read on. Let no man say when he is tempted, uh -huh. I am tempted of God. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil, uh -huh. neither tempted he any man. See what it said? Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither do if he tempted any man. Go ahead and read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. You know say every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. You did that because that's what you wanted to do. So ain't nobody for you to blame but you. That is what you decided that you wanted to do. Yes, sir. 
every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own. Let's read that whole verse again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And enticed. Go ahead and read on. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And then when you give in to it, it brings forth sin. But then sin got a cause too. And he's going to tell you what that is. Go ahead and read on. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. So every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and he give in to it, in other words. And then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth death. Skip down to uh, verse 18. Go ahead and read. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, uh -huh. that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So now he's going to tell you what it is that you really need to do. Go ahead and read on. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, uh -huh. let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now he said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. In other words, don't let your mouth move all the time. Yes, sir. Whenever you see somebody's mouth always moving, they ain't going to never get it right. You ain't got time to listen because you're always talking. So he said, be slow to speak and slow to wrath because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I guarantee you, when you want them hot hands always jumping hot all the time, I guarantee you you're going to do something wrong. Yes, you're going to say something wrong and you're going to do something wrong. Why do you think the Lord got this in here? Be slow to speak, slow to wrath. And quick to hear. Go ahead, continue reading. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Go ahead. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Look what he said for you to do. He said lay apart. You lay that apart. You got to lay that apart. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, which naughtiness means wickedness. He said, lay that aside. Go ahead, read on. And receive with meekness the oh. engrafted word which is able to save your soul. And then he said, you got to receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. But then he's going to let you know you got to do something. You know, not just receive it, but then you got to do it. As we just read earlier, be a doer and not just a hearer. Go ahead, read on. But be ye doers of the word, uh -huh. and not hearers only, Go ahead. deceiving your own selves. So now it's something you got to do then, isn't it? Yes, you got to be a do. You got to hear it, but then you got to be a doer of it as well. I thought you didn't have nothing to do, but open your mouth and say, I believe. Well, what is all this stuff here That's that right. we are reading about? That's right, brother. You know, you're drawn away your own love. Be quick to hear, slow to speak. Slow to wrath. And be ye doers of it, and not just hearers only, right. deceiving your own self. Because if you're just a hearing and not a doer, you ain't doing nothing but deceiving your own self. Because you ain't got nothing coming. That's right. Your, your faith, I started to say, it might be the same as the one that, that's not a hearer of it. But your faith going to be worse. Yes, sir. Because the one that ain't heard, at least he can plead ignorance. You can't plead ignorance. Lord even said those that don't know and don't do, they're going to be whooped with a few strikes. But those that know and don't do, they will be many whooped with many yes, strikes. Sir. So now you done heard it, you know about it, but you ain't going to do it. That's right. So you got many strikes coming. So the man that... If you ain't going to do it, the man that is in ignorance is a little bit better off than you. Yes, sir. What verse out? 23. Go ahead and read. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Go ahead. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Go ahead. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. See what it said, that looketh into it, and not just look into it, but continue therein. Because you know you got a salvation. 
got a starting point and it has a final destination. Yes, sir. You know, you start somewhere. You know, you start by repenting, getting baptized in the name of Jesus. But you ain't saved then. I'll tell you what you saved from. You saved from your past sins. So you won't be held accountable for them. But you don't have eternal salvation at that time. That's right. You got to continue. You got to look into it. And then you got to continue. Then you got to do this. Every man have to do it for them own selves. Go ahead, read on. Middle of 25. Go ahead and read. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, uh -huh. this man shall be blessed in his deed. Go ahead and read. Have any man among you seem to be religious, uh -huh. and bottle if not his tongue, Go ahead. but deceiveth his own heart, uh -huh. this man's religion is vain. Now, that tongue. We got to deal with that tongue. One day soon, we're going to have to deal with that tongue. Because the book says it is a world of iniquity. Yes, sir. But he said, now, if you can't keep it in check, he said, then your religion is in vain. Go ahead and read on. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Uh -huh. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction Go ahead. and to keep himself unspotted from the world. No, the word it said here to keep himself unspotted from the world. You got you to gotta learn to keep your own self unspotted from the world. Because every man going to answer for what they have done. So now he's telling you pure religion is to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Start reading here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 24. And I'm going to show you what Paul said about how he had to keep himself. You know, even though, you know, he was, he was this man of God. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he even said he had all of the gifts yes, sir. of the Spirit. But nevertheless, he's going to tell you, I got to keep myself in check. Because every man got to keep them own selves in check. Start reading here. At 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll pick it up at verse 24. 9 and 24. Okay, go ahead and read it, brother. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? Well, you know, uh, he is comparing this, this journey to salvation as a race. And we are in this race. Because you're running for your very life, people. You're running to get eternal salvation. That is what this race is all about. Go ahead, continue reading. So run that ye may obtain. Go ahead. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Well, you know, every man that striveth for the mastery, he says temperate in all things. You know what temperate means? That means you got to have some self-control. Yes, sir. That's what temperate is. You got to learn how to keep your flesh in check. If you're running for the prize, every man that's running for it is temperate, it says, in all things. Go ahead and read on. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, uh -huh. but we an incorruptible. Well, he's comparing it to a foot race. He said they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But he said we doing it to obtain an incorruptible crown. You know, they go and they run in the Olympics, and they get a gold medal or something. That's a corruptible crown. But you are doing it to get an incorruptible crown. You know what that is? Eternal life. Yes, that sir. is the race that you are in. You are in a race to get eternal life. Go ahead, continue reading. I therefore so run, uh -huh. not as uncertainly, Go ahead. so I fight, not as one that beateth the air. Go ahead and read. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Look at what he said. I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. Every man got to keep his own body and bring it into subjection. And what Paul is, you know, even though he had all of these gifts and being full of the Holy Ghost and did all these, Lord did all these miracles by his hand, he said, I still got to keep under my body and I got to bring my body into subjection. 
Go ahead, read on. Why do you have to do that? He's going to tell you. Go ahead, read. Lest that by any means, uh -huh. when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. He said, because if I don't, least by any means, after I done preached to others, I myself be a castaway. So you got to keep your own flesh yes, in sir. check. Because if you don't, then you can wind up being a castaway. Uh, but he said, every man got to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's, that's on you. That's on each individual to keep themselves unspotted from the world. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Romans chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7, Romans 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. So Paul's going to tell you something here. There was times when he stumbled, but he always got back up. Might be times you stumble, but you always got to get back yes, up. Sir. And that's really what he's saying here in this seventh chapter of Romans here. But he's going to let you know as well that the law is good. Because, you know, people want to accuse Paul of saying that the law ain't good anymore. Well, the law that he was telling you that you don't have to do anymore is the animal sacrifice law. He understood that. That's right. And everybody that's learned in the word of God, they understand it as well. It is the unlearned people that don't understand this. God ain't never threw away his moral law. That's why we read in the very last chapter in the Bible, if you want your access back to the tree of life, then you got to keep the commandments. That's right. If I, what you going to do with that? Nobody regards any of that. Because everybody looking for an easy way out. You know, a way you can serve God without having to do anything. Without having to make any type of commitment. Without having any restrictions placed on you. Everybody look for God, they can just serve. Just open your mouth and say, I believe. That's good enough. Start reading at 7 and 7. Go ahead and read. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Uh -huh. God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. Uh -huh. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Well, you know it said that in the 10, didn't it? Yes, sir. So now he really took you back to the 10. But skip down to uh, verse 12 here. He's going to let you know it's good, and he's going to let you know that at all times he tried to keep it. Go ahead, read. Wherefore the law is holy, Go ahead. and the commandment holy, and just, and good. I don't know why they never read this. They never read this. Well, Paul said the law is holy, and it is just, and it is good. And now he's going to tell you about how he tried to keep it all the time, but he may come up short sometimes. Go ahead and read. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Uh -huh. God forbid. Go ahead. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, uh -huh. that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Go ahead and read. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, uh -huh. sold under sin. Go ahead and read. For that which I do, I allow not. See what it say? He said the thing that, that he do are not the things that he really want to do. He said, the things that I do, I allow not. Go ahead, continue to read. For what I do, uh -huh. that do I not. And then some things he said he would do, those are the things that he don't do at times. But he's going to let you know, because he hates himself when he does these things, then he consider unto the law that it is good. Go ahead, read on. But what I hate, uh -huh. that do I. Now, he's not talking about he does this all of the time. No, sir. But he's letting you know occasionally he finds himself doing things that he shouldn't do. But because he hates himself when he do them, then he consent unto the law that it is good. Yes. Go ahead, read on. If then I do that which I would not. Now I he said then if I do the thing that I don't really want to do. You know, sometimes that, 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 that flesh gets weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes, sir. But you can't let that flesh be weak too much. That's right. And that's what Paul is saying, you know, 
because then I do the thing that I don't want to do. Go ahead, continue reading. I consent unto the law that it is good. I consent unto the law that it is good. So, you know, if he got in trouble sometime, he always recovered. So if you stumble, you got to get up. If you stumble again, you got to get up again. Because the Lord lets you know even the just fall sometimes. Yes, sir. But they always get back up. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 2 Timothy 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 4 and 1. I want to read you that to give you a license to sin. Don't, don't misunderstand that. No, sir. We'll go out looking for something to stumble on. No, sir. Start reading here at 2 Timothy <coughs> chapter 4. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. 2 Timothy 4. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. 4 and 1. Go ahead and read it. I charge ye therefore before God uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Well, when the Lord returns, that's when he's going to judge every man according to his yes, works. At his, at his appearing and at his kingdom. He said, I charge you therefore, but let me show you what Paul said here. Skip down to uh, verse 6. Go ahead and read. For I am now ready to be offered, uh -huh. and the time of my departure is at hand. Well, apparently the Lord had shown Paul that his time was at hand. He was about to die. He said, now I'm ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Go ahead, read on. I have fought a good fight. So now he said, I fought this good fight here. That's what everybody got to do. They got to fight a good fight. When you stumble, get back up. Stumble again, get back up again. You got to, because it is a fight, like we were reading over another place in the scripture there. You're in this race, and you fight, not as one that beat it for air. So you're in this fight. You're in this fight for eternal salvation. Not for a corruptible crown, but for an incorruptible crown. So now, he said, uh, I fought a good fight. What else did he say? Go ahead and read on. I have finished my course. And I have finished the course. Go ahead and read on. I have kept the faith. And I have kept the faith. Even though he may have stumbled, he always, apparently he got back up, yes, didn't sir. he? Yes, sir. Because he said, I done kept the faith. I done finished the course, and I have kept the faith. And because I have done that, look at what he says he have coming to him. Go ahead and read. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Wait a minute. He said, therefore... There is laid up for me a crown of right. Because I've finished the course and I've kept the faith. Always keep the faith. And you've got to finish the course. He's saying, therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Go ahead and read on. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Go ahead and read. And not to me only, uh -huh. but unto all them also that love his appearing. He was saying not only is he going to get his at that day, but all of those that love is appearing. That's if you're going to be able to say what he said. I've finished the course and I've kept the faith. You've got to finish the course and you've got to keep, keep the faith, people. And if you do that, then there's a crown of righteousness laid up for you. That is what this race is about. That is what this fight is about. That you finish the course that you might get this crown of righteousness that has been laid up for you. Let's go now to uh, let's go now to uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter ten, and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. First Corinthians chapter ten, and we'll pick it up at verse one here. Ten and one. The Lord here, you know, He's gonna tell you something about. Uh, Stay in the course and not getting entangled in sin as Israel did when they came out of Egypt. Start reading at 10 and 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I would not that ye should be ignorant 
Go ahead. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Go ahead and read. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Uh -huh. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Go ahead. And did all drink the same spiritual meat. Uh -huh. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Now, you know, what we're reading about is when Israel came out of Egypt and what they drank of and what they ate of was the word of God. Go ahead, continue to read. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. See what I said? Many of them, God was not well pleased. This is what I was saying earlier, because he wound up killing so many of them there in the wilderness. Even though they was Israel, knew they was Israel, knew they had been the chosen people of God, all of that. But yet the Lord wound up killing them there in the wilderness because they did not do what he said that they were supposed to do. And he's going to let you know, don't you wind up with the same fate that those That's people right. did. Go ahead, continue. That's what the Lord is telling you about this stuff. To make certain that you don't wind up in the same condition that they wound up in. Go ahead and read on. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. Mm -hmm. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. See what it said? These things was examples unto us. To the intent that we don't make the same mistakes that they made. Don't lust after the same things that they lusted after. And the Lord wound up killing them then. And they knew better, didn't they? Yes, sir. Because the Lord, first of all, he came down and spoke the ten to them. Then he gave it to Moses. Then he had Moses say, you got a choice. You can keep the commandments or live, or you can break them and die. That's right. So they knew better, didn't they? But yet still, they sinned there in the wilderness, and the Lord said he swore in his wrath that they would not enter to his rest. You know what that rest is? When the Lord returned and established his kingdom yes, on sir. this earth. So he killed them there in the wilderness. Go ahead, he's telling Verse you, don't lust after what they did. Go ahead, read on. Verse 7. Read it. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Go ahead, read. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, uh -huh. and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Go ahead, read. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Uh -huh. Neither murmur ye, Go ahead. as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. There go that murmuring again. Lord, you know, Israel big about that murmur. But he said, don't do like they did. Because they murmured and the Lord destroyed them right there in the wilderness. Go ahead and read on. Now all these happened unto them for examples. See what it says? These things happened unto them for examples. Examples for who? Go ahead and read on. And they are written for our admonition. And they are written for our instructions. They are written for our admonitions. Go ahead, continue Upon reading. whom the ends of the world are come. Well, that would be us, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, sir. You know, upon whom the ends of the world has come. Go ahead, read on. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, Go ahead. lest he fall. Read. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Well, you know, he letting you know. You know, the stuff that you going through. It is coming unto me. You ain't the first one that had to deal with that. That's right. You think whatever this shit it is that you are being tempted with, you think that ain't coming to man. You the first and the only one that ever had to deal with it. But the Lord going to let you know that he always going to leave a way out. Whatever it is you're being tempted with, it is coming among men. But the Lord always leave a way out. And he left Israel a way out. What was Israel way out? Stop sinning and obey right. the commandments. What's your way out? Stop sinning and obey the That's commandments. That's right. That's your way out. Go ahead and read. Middle of 13. Go ahead and read. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. See what I say? He ain't going to suffer you to be tempted above what you are able to bear. You can bear it. You know, you think your, your plight is so hard. Hey, I just came bad. Well, what does, what does this mean then if you just came bad? That's right. He ain't going to suffer you to be tempted above what you are able to bear, but he always leave you a way out. Go ahead, finish that verse. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape uh -huh. that ye may be able to bear it. What, with the temptation, he always going to leave a way to escape 
that you might be able to bear. Let's go over now to uh, 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 Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1, Matthew 15. And we'll begin reading at verse 1, 15. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Because the problem is within, the problem ain't without. You know, people too often, they want to make somebody else be the problem. Yes, sir. No, you are the problem. You are your biggest enemy, always your biggest That's right. enemy. It has always been that way. People, people don't like to admit that, but that is how it is. You are your own worst enemy. Start reading here in Matthew chapter 15. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because the problem starts within. The problem don't start without. It starts within. Start reading at Matthew 15 and began at verse 1. Go ahead and read, brother. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, Uh-huh. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Go ahead. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the tra commandments of God by your tradition? Well, you know, they asked him about some tradition. Jesus asked them about the commandments. Because it is, it is about the commandments, people. That is what it is about. That is what's going to save you, the commandments. Nobody wants to do them, but that is what's going to save you. Other than the blood of Jesus, you're going to have to have the commandments if you expect to get yes, salvation. Sir. Go ahead, read on. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Well, where did he, where did he command that at? In the, the tent, tent, didn't he? Yes, sir. He? Everybody taking you back to the tent. But nobody wants to hear about the tent. All they want to hear about is just have faith, and God's going to save you. Well, faith, again, without works is dead That's being right. alone. Yes, sir. You show your faith by your work. You say, I believe. Well, if you believe, you go do something, don't That's you? That's right. I bet if I told you it was a ton of money around the corner there, you wouldn't just sit here and say, I believe. You beat it out that door so fast yes, in around the corner. Yes, sir. Well, that's your works. That's right. Going around there to see if the money's around there. Yes, sir. You got to do works, people. You got to do something other than open your mouth and say, I believe. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, Go ahead. and honor not father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Go ahead and read. Ye hypocrite. Uh-huh. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, Go ahead. This people drive nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, uh -huh. but their heart is far from me. Go ahead and read. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So what he's letting you know here is if you don't do it according to his commandments, then you're wasting your time. Yes, sir. You're doing it all in vain. Either you're going to do it according to the commandments of God or you're going to waste your time. I said it earlier, the problem is within. Skip down to verse 15. This is what I meant. Go ahead and read. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Go ahead. Declare unto us this parable. Uh-huh. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Go ahead and read. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? Well, you know, they had asked him about eating with unwashed hands. Well, he's going to let them know. You know, it ain't what goes in, it's what cometh out. And he's going to tell you what it is that really you ought to focus on. Go ahead and read. But those things which proceed out of the mouth uh, come forth from the heart. He said the things that proceed out of the mouth, those are the things that come forth from the heart. Evil out, you know what that means? Evil is in. Yes, sir. That's all that it means. Because he said the things that come out, those are the things that come from the heart. Go ahead and read on. And they defile the man. He said that is the stuff. That defiles a man. The stuff that cometh out, not the stuff that's going. This ain't talking about no dietary law either. No, sir. 
I'm trying to use it. It, this as the dietary law. Because that's what they try to mess it up at, but it ain't got nothing to do with no dietary law. whole thing's about eating with our wife's hands. Yes, sir. But then he turns around and throws some more stuff in here, letting you know it's not what go in that defile a man, it's what come about that defile a man. He ain't going to tell you what that is. Go ahead and read on. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. See what I say, out of the heart. He ain't talking about this thing that pump blood either. He's talking about your mind. Yes, That's sir. where the problem starts right here. That's why the Lord tell you, you got to get this straight. If you don't never get this straight, you ain't going to never get it That's right. right. What the Lord be working on? Why do you think he said he's going to put the law in your heart and write it in your mind That's under right. the new covenant? Because you got to get this thing up here straight. You got to learn to start thinking right. Until you do that, you ain't going to never get it right. What verse are we? The middle of 19. Go ahead and read it. Murders, adulteries, uh -huh. fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. All of these things coming from within and not from without. Go ahead and read on. These are the things which defile a man. Uh -huh. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. See what it says? These are the things that defile a man. The things that are within, and he told you what they are. But every man makes his own decision as to whether they are going to get entangled in these things or not. Everybody makes their own decision about that. So therefore, every man will be judged according to what they do. And it all starts with a man. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. And we'll pick it up at verse 5. Jeremiah 17. And we'll pick it up at verse 5. Lord know about the heart. He know about the mind. That's why he's going to judge every man according to his own works. Start reading in 17 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, go ahead. and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. You say, whose heart departeth from the Lord. How do your heart depart from the Lord? By walking contrary to the word of the Lord. That is how it departs from the Lord. Now he said, Cursed is the man. Whose heart departed from the Lord. Go ahead, read on. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, uh -huh. and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, Go ahead. in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Uh -huh. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, uh -huh. and whose hope the Lord is. He said that, but he says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, and in whose hope the Lord is. In other words, talking about when you walk in his word. That's how you trust in the Lord. By doing what he says to do. He said, blessed is that man. Go ahead, continue to read. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, uh -huh. and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Now you can, either, you can either trust in the Lord and be blessed, or you can turn from the Lord and be cursed. But you're going to make that decision for yourself. Ain't nobody going to make that decision for you. Every man going to make it for himself. Go ahead, continue to read. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Go ahead. The heart is deceitful above all things. See what it said? The heart is deceitful above all. This man. It is deceitful above all things. Go ahead, read on. And desperately wicked. And see what it said? And it is desperately wicked. Read. Who can know it? Who can know it? You know who know it? God know it. All them little evil, wicked thoughts going on in your head that don't nobody else know about. God know about it. Yes, sir. That's why he's going to judge every man according to his heart and according to his works. Go ahead and read on. 
I, the Lord, search the heart. See what the Lord said? I'll search the heart. Go ahead and read on. I try the rain. Go ahead. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. To give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. So now, everybody is going to determine their own fate. Because you're either going to walk in right. You're going to make the choice. To walk in righteousness, or you're going to make the choice to walk in wickedness. It's going to be one or the other. But every man going to make that choice for themselves. Let's go to, uh, go to Romans chapter 5. We're going to read just one verse. Verse 12, Romans 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. 5 and 12. Because if you make the wrong choice, people, it's going to bring death. Romans 5 and 12. Okay, go ahead and read. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, uh -huh. and death by sin. Now he said by one man sin entered into the world, that one man that was Adam. But he made the choice. Didn't he, made that, yes, didn't he make that choice? Yes, sir. Lord told him what to do. He said, you had an option of, uh, of this tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So therefore, he brought death on himself. And everybody after him have made that same choice. And they have brought death on themselves. Go ahead and finish that verse. And so death passed upon all men. And so death passed upon all men. Go ahead and continue For reading. that all have sinned. For all have sinned. You made the choice to do it yourself. Didn't nobody make it for you. You made it for yourself. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, 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 Acts chapter 26. And we'll pick it up at verse 14. Acts 26, and we'll begin reading at verse 14. I want to show you, people, so everybody will understand that they're going to determine their own fate. 26, and we'll pick it up at verse 14. Okay. Go ahead and read. And when we were all fallen to the earth... I heard a voice speaking unto me uh -huh. and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You know, Is Paul here, he's just sort of explaining how it happened when he was converted. You know, he fell uh, uh, to the ground. He heard uh, uh, a voice saying, uh, why you kick against the pricks? Go ahead, continue read. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Go ahead, read. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Uh -huh. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Go ahead and read. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Go ahead and read. To open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, uh -huh. and from the power of Satan unto God. Go ahead, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Go ahead. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Go ahead. But showed first unto them of Damascus uh -huh. and Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles uh -huh. that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So now he tell them what they, you know, he said, I've told the Gentiles even that they should repent and do works. They didn't have to do no works. And then he said they have to do works. That show repentance. So what kind of work do you do to show that you are repentant? You start obeying God. That yes, is sir. the works that you do. But he said you got to do works that shows repentance. So the book keeps saying over and over, you got some works yes, to do. Sir. And the work that you got to do are works that shows repentance. Let's go over now to uh, Acts chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 36, Acts 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 36, and it all starts right here. 
But you know, you got this word repent. That means to change. Change your mind. Change your actions as well. So now and you have to do works that show repentance. Start reading at Acts 2 and pick it up at uh, verse 36. 2 and 36. Okay, go ahead and read. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Well, he's saying the same thing to the Gentiles as well in Acts chapter 10. But he says here, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Go ahead and read on. That God have made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Go ahead and read. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, uh -huh. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, they knew they needed to do something. It said they were sorry for what they had done. They realized that they had made mistakes. So now they asked the question, What shall we do? And this is what Peter said to them. Go ahead and read. Then Peter said unto them, Go ahead. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, uh -huh. and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's step one. You got to repent. You got to have a change of mind and a change of action. Then you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, and after that, you got to walk in the law. Then you got to show the fruit of repentance. Let's go and look at what Jesus said when he got baptized. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1, Matthew 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Because as we read earlier, you got to show works meet for repentance, or works that show repentance. Matthew 3, began reading at verse 1, 3 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, uh -huh. and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, he's telling, you know, when John came, you know, he was the one that came before Jesus, that was preparing you for Jesus. And what did he say? Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead and read on. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, uh -huh. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Go ahead and read. And the same John had his, had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern gir uh, girdle about his loin, uh -huh. and his meat was locust and wild honey. Go ahead and read. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan uh -huh. and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Well, this became known as the baptism of John. And that was good up until Jesus came and died. And after that, you had to be baptized in the name of Jesus. But John said something here, here about this repentance and about showing fruits, meat for repentance. Go ahead, continue reading. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, Go ahead, read. he said unto them, uh -huh. O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Uh -huh. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. He said, bring therefore fruits, meat for repentance, fruits that show repentance. You know, it's one thing to say I repent. It's another thing to show fruits, meat for repentance, or works, meat for repentance, or work that show repentance. Yes, sir. You can say I repent. But if you really repent, then you're going to show some works that's meet for repentance, that shows repentance. Go ahead, continue reading. Verse 9. Go ahead, read. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Uh -huh. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Go ahead, read. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Uh -huh. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's what he said, every tree that don't bring forth good fruit, he said that tree is hewn down and it is cast into the fire. That's why he said you got to show works that show repentance. Because if you're still doing the same old thing all of the time, then you ain't showing no works That's right. that show repentance. Because if, if you were, then you wouldn't be doing the same old thing over and over and over That's again. That's right. At some point, you got to show fruits that, that's meat for repentance. Fruits that show repentance. Go ahead, continue reading. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Go ahead. 
But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, uh -huh. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Go ahead. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Go ahead, read. Whose fan is in his hand, uh -huh. and he will thoroughly purge his floor Go ahead. and gather his wheat into the garner. You know who the wheat is? That is the righteous. In another parable in Luke chapter 13, those are the ones that's going to be in the kingdom. That is the, the, the wheat that will be gathered to the garden. But on the other hand, go ahead and read on. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. But he's going to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. I don't have to tell you what that is. You already know what that's that is. Right. But he wants you to show fruit that is meat for repentance. Go over here and look at another thing here. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at verse uh, 13. Because we're going to even read it again. Because Lord just keeps saying it over and over. That you know he's going to judge every man according to his work. He's going to reward every man according to his works. Not according to somebody else. That's right. You can't save nobody but you. You can teach somebody what it is that they need to do to be saved. You can try to help encourage them to do the right thing. Try to motivate them to do the right thing. But you can't save nobody but you. You are the only one that you can save. And you can only do that by your work. Start reading here at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 13. 1 Peter 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 13. 1 and 13. Okay, go ahead, read. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, uh -huh. be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now he said, gird up the loins of your mind. How do you gird them up? You gird them up with the word of God. That's how you gird them up. He said, and, 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 and be sober. In other words, being sober, that means to live righteously. And hope until the end for the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read on. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. See what it said? As obedient children and not fashioning yourselves. According to your former lust, when you were in ignorance. You remember the days when you didn't know or didn't care. But he said, now be obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lust. When you were in ignorance. But this is what he's saying you should do. Go ahead and read. But as he which hath called you is holy, uh -huh. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. See what it says, the one that called ye is holy, be ye holy in all manner of lifestyle. Go ahead and read on. Because, it's, because it is written, uh -huh. be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, it, it, uh, Peter said here, because it is written. Nobody ever goes back to see where it is written. They never do that. They quote this all the time. Be ye holy. By the Lord your God, I'm holy. And whatever they decide to call holy, that is it. But he said it is written. You want to know what is written? You go back and read what the Lord said to be holy. And every time you read it, the Lord gives you some kind of commandment. Be ye holy, keep my Sabbath day. Be ye holy, keep my dietary law. Be ye holy, don't steal, lie, commit adultery. Every time the Lord said, be holy, give you a commandment. Go ahead and read on. Verse 17. Go ahead and read. And if ye call on the Father uh -huh. without respect of persons. See what I say? If ye call on the Father, he don't have no respect of persons. Go ahead and read on. Judgeth, judgeth according to every man's work. See what I said? Judgeth according to every man's work. He ain't got no respect of persons. He don't care who you are. He's going to judge every man according to his works. Go ahead and continue reading. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. He said, therefore, it is wise to pass the time of your sojourning here with fear. In other words, why are you in this light? Yes, sir. Why are you in this flesh? He says, wise for you to pass the time of your sojourning here with fear. 
I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna show you why he said that. Let's go over first to uh let's go over first to uh well let's go to uh 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 first Peter chapter four and we'll pick it up at verse seventeen. First Peter four and we'll begin reading at verse seventeen. Now you see he's gonna judge every man according to his works. Therefore, pass the time of your sojourning here with fear. Start reading at verse 17. Go ahead and read. For the time has come that the judgment must be begin at the house of God. Now, he said when he started his judgment, it's going to be at the house of God. Everybody think it's going to be out there. No, it's going to be, it's going to start at the house of God. Go ahead and read on. And if it first begin at us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now he said if it's going to start with the house of God. What will be the end of those that do not obey the gospel of God? You can, you can imagine what it will be. Go ahead and read on. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. See what it says, the righteous scarcely be. You know what scarcely is? They barely going to yes, make sir. it. That means you might get singed a little bit with the fire. That's what scarcely means, yes, barely going to yes, make sir. it. He said a righteous, barely going to make it. Well, what's going to be the end of those that obey not the gospel of God? Go ahead and finish that. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? He said, where then shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If the righteous, barely going to make it. That's why he said, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Because he's going to judge every man according as his work shall be. Let's go over to uh, 2 John. It's only one chapter. And we'll pick it up at verse 5. 2 John. And we'll begin reading at verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, go ahead and read. And now I beseech thee, lady, uh -huh. not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. So now this lady that he's talking to here is the church. And he said, I ain't wrote no new commandment. He said, we've had this one from the very start. And that is that we love one another. What do you think the, the commandments are about? They are about loving one another. Yes, sir. You know, Paul kind of broke this thing down in Romans chapter 13. Because if you love one another, then you ain't going to work no ill That's towards right. your brother. That's what thou shalt not steal mean. You know, if you love your brother, you ain't going to steal from right, him. Right. You ain't going to sleep with his wife. That's right. You ain't going to lie on him. That's right. So you had that from the very beginning. The law is the law of love. Always been. Because they, they, they try to get around the, the commandments by saying, you know, we under the law of love now. Well, it's always been yes, the law of love. Jesus told you that love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, On these two hang all of the law yes, and the commandments. Because if you love your neighbor, you ain't going to work no ill right. toward him. Yes, sir. If you love the Lord your God, you're going to be obedient unto him. So on them two hang all of the law. But they use everything to try and get around the law. And the book keeps telling you that you got to keep it. You're going to be judged by it. And he's going to reward you according to your work. You do the law, you get a good reward coming. And if you don't do it, you got an evil reward coming. Go ahead, continue reading. Verse 6. Read it. And this is love. Go ahead. That we walk after his commandments. You see what love is? This is love that you walk after his commandments. Go ahead and read on. This is the commandment. Go ahead. That, as ye have heard from the beginning, uh -huh. you shall walk in it. He said, this is the commandment that you have heard from the very beginning, that you should walk in it. Go ahead and read on. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Go ahead. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Uh-huh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Go ahead and read. Look to yourself uh -huh. that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward. You know what wrath is? Work. Yes, sir. 
So he said, look for, he just told you about the commandments, didn't he? Yeah. And he said, you look for yourselves that you lose not the thing that you have worked for, but rather that you receive a full reward. What is your full reward? Eternal life. Yes, sir. So now he said, oh, because you, if you're going to get in the kingdom, you don't, you, you're going to have to do some work. And I don't mean just opening your mouth saying I believe either. But he said, don't lose the thing that you have worked for, but that rather you receive a full reward for these things. Because if you're getting in, you, you done done some works. And what are the works that you have done? The works that you have done, he just told you here these commandments. That's the works you have done. We got three other places to go. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. And we'll pick it up at verse 35. Luke 12. And we'll begin reading at verse 35. 12 and 35. Because the Lord is going to return. And he's going to judge every man according as his work shall be. 12 and 35. So don't mess around and blow it. Look to yourself that you don't lose the thing that you have worked for. So here you is, you putting in this labor, trying to keep this flesh in check. Yes, sir. That after you don't preach to others, you don't wind up being a castaway. So don't throw all that away. You gotta you have the opportunity at eternal life. Ain't nothing worth giving up that, give, give, giving that up for. Nothing. Especially when you consider the other options. Yes, sir. <laughs> so now don't lose what you done labored for. Start reading at Luke 12 and pick it up at verse 35. Go ahead and read. Let your loins be girded about uh -huh. and your lights burning. Now he said, let your loins be girded about. What loins? It meaning, good about with what? Good the about truth. with the truth. Yes, sir. That's what let them be good about. And when he say your light burning, you want light burning in, that means you're walking in it. Because as we read earlier, it is not the hearers, but it is the Do doers. It. So let be good about with the truth and your light burning. You know, like the book said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify God. You might be an inspiration. If they see your good work, you might be an inspiration to them yes, sir. to want to do it. Amen. Go ahead, read. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Wait a minute. He said, ye yourselves like men that wait on their God. Because I'll tell you right now, if you ain't walking in righteousness, you don't want to see God. That's right. But he said, but ye yourselves like as men that wait on your God. Because when he knock on that door, if you ain't walking with righteousness, don't open that. <laughs> you don't want to see him. That's right, brother. That's why he said, ye yourselves like as men that is waiting on their God. If you're walking in righteousness, you're going to be glad to see him. But if you ain't, you ain't going to be too happy to see him. That's right. Go ahead, read. When he will return from the wedding. When he will return, because he's coming to the wedding. And he's coming to the wedding to marry the church. And he said, a bride, make yourself ready. In other words, be dressed in the fine linen, white and clean. The fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And ye yourself waiting for the Lord when he will return from the wind. Go ahead, read on. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Go ahead, read. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Now he said, blessed are the servants that when the Lord come, he finds so watching. Because they're ready. They've been walking in righteousness. They got on the clean white garment. So they're ready to see him. And like it said here, they're going to open up the door immediately. Glad to see you, Father. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, Go ahead and read. that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet uh -huh. and will come forth and serve them. Go ahead and read. And if he shall come in the second watch, uh -huh. or come in the third watch, Go ahead. and find them so, blessed are those servants. Go ahead and read. And this know, 
that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, uh -huh. he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. So now it don't matter what watch he come in, if you're ready, if he come in the second watch or the third watch, it don't matter. You ready. You just like the man that knew his house was going to uh, get broke into. You laying there waiting with your shotgun. Yes, you know this guy coming at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, you laying there ready. And that is what he's telling you. You need to be always ready. Did he come as a thief in the night and take you out? So you got to be always ready. Go yes, ahead and read on. Be ye therefore ready also. See what it said, be ye ready also. Go ahead and read. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Then Peter said unto him, uh -huh. Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, Go or ahead. even to all? Now he said, you speak this parable unto us, or even unto all. Go ahead and read on. And the Lord said, uh -huh. who then is that faithful and wise steward? In other words, I'm speaking it to everybody. He said, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Go ahead and read on. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household. That is what you're looking for. That's what you're waiting on. To become ruler over his household. That's what you, other than eternal life, you are waiting for the Lord to return so you can rule with him over his household. Go ahead and read on. To give them their portion of meat in due season. So to give them their portion of in due season. Well, when it's due season, due season is when the Lord returns. Yes, sir. So you're waiting for that. And you're trying to make yourself ready for that. Go ahead and read on. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Go ahead and read. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. See what it says, of a truth the Lord says, so I'm going to make him ruler over everything that he has. Go ahead and read on. But in if that servant say in his heart, uh -huh. My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. See what, it the what that servant say in his heart? My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servant and the maid servant, and eat and drink with the drunk. In other words, go back out in the world, in other words. Go ahead and read on. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. Well, that's what Ezekiel was saying in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. You know, the Lord's going to come if he catch him in that and if he die in that. Because, you know, your hour is all the time. Man's hour is all of the time. You never know when your hour is. That's why your garment got to always be white. Because he'll come in an hour when you look him not for him. And this is what he'll do. Go ahead and read on. Middle of 46. Go ahead and read. And at an hour when he is not aware. Go ahead. And will cut him in sunder. Uh-huh. And will appoint him his portion with the unbeliever. You know what they say? He'll cut him asunder and he will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. You know where the unbelievers are going. Go ahead and read on. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. See what they say? That servant that knew his Lord's will. But he didn't prepare himself. You know, you know what you are supposed yes, to do. Yes, he just told you knew the Lord's will, but you didn't prepare yourself. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Therefore, he says, this is what he'll do with that. So you knew the Lord's will, you didn't prepare yourself. Go ahead and read on. Neither did according to his will. And neither did you do according to his will. You know, Jesus even said something. Not everyone that said, Unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. But he that doeth the will of the Father, yes, that is the one that will enter into the kingdom. You, right. you can Lord, Lord, all you want. And nobody can beat Israel doing it. It's Lord everything with them. But he says here, you knew your Lord's will, you didn't prepare yourself. Neither did you do according to his will. Go ahead and read on. Shall be beaten with many stripes. Well, this is what I was saying earlier. You knew the will. You didn't prepare yourself. He said that servant will be beaten with many stripes. Go ahead and read on. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes uh -huh. shall be beaten with few stripes. At least he got a little break anyway. Because he can plead ignorant. You, but when you know the will, you can't plead nothing. That's right. 
you know the will, then you got to prepare yourself. Go ahead and read on. For unto whomsoever much is given, uh -huh. of him shall be much required. Well, much have been given. And he requires much. Go ahead and read on. And to whom men have committed much, uh -huh. of him they will ask the more. Now, let's go over to uh, 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 Matthew chapter 16. And we'll pick it up at verse 24. We got this one. And we got one more. Matthew 16. And we'll pick it up at verse 24. 16 and 24. Go ahead and read. Then said Jesus unto di his disciples, uh -huh. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. To the Lord say, If any man will come after him, let him deny yourself and take up his cross and follow me. What does deny mean? I mean, whatever it is that you need to give up, give it up. I don't care what it is. I don't care how much you like it. I don't care how good it is to you. Whatever it is, you need to give it up. If it's going to interfere with you being a servant of God, then you need to give it up. Yes, sir. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow after me. In other words, whatever it is that you're dealing with, however hard it may seem, that's just your cross that you got to bear. Because everybody got to bear one. And I, I, I guarantee you, yours ain't no better than the next one. Or it ain't no harder than the next one. Oh, my cross is so hard. Try changing with somebody else. Yes, sir. Oh, give me my cross back so I can give him his back. <laughs> but he said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow after me. Go ahead, continue to read. For whosoever will save his life uh -huh. shall lose it. See what I'm saying? Any man that will save his life shall lose it. In other words, what he's telling you here, if you give up the word, trying to hold on to this life, you're going to lose out on eternal life. Yes, At whatever cost he's telling you, hold on to the word. Whatever cross it is you're bearing, then just hold on to the word. Because if you give that up, trying to hold on to this life, you're going to lose out on eternal life. Keep reading. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake uh -huh. shall find it. See what it said about the one that will lose this life. For his sake, for the word of God's sake, he's going to find everlasting life. What verse are we? 26. Go ahead and read. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Go ahead and read. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Go ahead. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father uh -huh. with, his, with his angels. Now, this is talking, this is talking about at, at, at the Master's second coming. He's going to come in the glory of his father with his angels. Go ahead and read on. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. And then he gonna reward every man according to his works. You know, the book keeps saying that over and over again, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. So that means you got some works to do. That's right. If he gonna reward every man according to his work, you got some works to do, That's people. Right. It's stuff about we ain't got no works to do. Jesus did it all. Now, Jesus came and died for your sins so that you don't have to die for right. Now, in order for you to get everlasting life, then there's some works that you have to do. And we've been we reading about those works all day. We got one other place, and that'll be it. Let's go to Ecclesiastes Acts chapter 12. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we'll pick it up at verse 13, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 13. I want you to hear this. I'm going to make sure everybody got this. I want you to hear this. This is the conclusion of it all. Because every man works 
going to be brought into judgment, whether it is good or whether it is evil. You make decisions in this life all the time. You need to make certain you make sound decisions because every man's work is going to be brought into judgment. Start reading at verse 13. Go ahead and read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is it. Go ahead and read. Fear God uh -huh. and keep his commandments. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. He said, fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Go ahead and read. For God shall bring every work into judgment. He said, God going to bring every work into judgment. There are good works and there are evil works. Yes, sir. And he's going to bring every work into judgment, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Go ahead and read on. With every secret thing. And with every secret thing. Go ahead and read on. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Or whether it be good or whether it be evil. Lord, going to weigh it all in the balance. Don't come up short. So he's going to weigh it in the balance. Yes, sir. So don't be like Bill says. I don't come up short. Because he's going to bring every work into judgment. The conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his command. Thank you. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, my brother. Good read, excellent read, brother. Praise God.